Hi YouTubers. Another YouTuber sent me a link to this godlikeproductions.com forum post and they felt it was very, very important. So I'm just sharing with other people. I'll post a link below. Can you bust this Fukushima nuclear? There are only 35 days or less until the fuel sustains a full-scale fission criticality. criticality sorry. The boron, which stops nuclear fission from occurring, will have exceeded its lifespan by this time. TEPCO had already made a request as of March to evacuate the reactors, though they are being forced to see it until the end by the Japanese government. God bless their souls, as, I am sh as it surely is a death mission. The first death was reported on Friday meaning that the situation is already well beyond cataclysmic. In all reality, the world's biggest dirty bomb will be released in no more than 35 days. TEPCO will likely evacuate the site between the dates June 16th to the 28th. This is because boron is limited and can no longer sustain itself within the current settings, meaning the fuel will release amounts of neutrons in such excess that the boron in any quantity will now be unable to capture enough neutrons to stop a criticality. At this time, neutrons will begin to react against atoms, leading to a spike in temperatures exceeding any known cooling process. The fuel will then go core through the floor and reach the water table in no less than one to six hours. At that time, the fuel will be both will both be released in atmospheric and oceanic form, plaguing Japan first and foremost. I presume that over 100,000 to 10 million deaths will be attributed to the event alone. Japan will likely be forced to abandon the main island entirely within that time. The continental United States will see the radiation within two days. The radiation will sweep across the northwest as far north as Vancouver, Canada and as far south as New Mexico. The main areas to be astray from are Seattle through San Diego and that includes Victoria, British Columbia, where my daughter is, and on uh, Vancouver Island, where my brother is, and in, in uh, Highland, California, where my other brother is. The radiation will likely be 350 to 800 CMP. FYI, 200 CPM is when you should run indoors. This will continue as a global norm for at least two months and at that time reactors 5 and 6 will likely begin the path to China syndrome. If you aren't in a temporary fallout shelter by August, you should be planning to find a more permanent location to settle. Come November, the situation will likely start over again, now reaching 1000 CPM or more. It will be anywhere up to a century before the initial radiation plumes settle. The 600,000 spent fuel rods will likely contaminate the entire planet, killing 45% or more of life on Earth. Once the reaction from neutrons has dwindled to a 100 to 300 CPM internationally, the biological life forms will begin to emerge from the now very few uncontaminated portions of the planet. Though human DNA will likely be mutated and lifespans will be lowered to 20 to 44 years old in adult males and 25 to 50 year, years old in adult females. So in short, uncontrolled fission taking place inside zirconium cells led to a temperature spike inside the core fuel cells to reactor one. Once the heat reached beyond boiling point, the tops of the fuel rods were exposed to the now present oxygen, 
creating a violent reaction damaging the rods. This allowed the nuclear fuel pellets to escape their containment, dropping to the bottom of the reactor core. At that point, TEPCO then had no choice but to induce nitrogen into the reactor as the melting of zirconium creates vast amounts of hydrogen. While the nitrogen settled the hydrogen, the remaining fuel collected in the bottom of the reactor, creating so much fission, the fuel melted through six feet of metal and concrete landing in the reactor's basement. Now we're playing a dangerous waiting game. The GE reactor design has an emergency platform designed under the reactor's containment in the event a meltdown was to occur. That feature was built to not only prolong a meltdown, but also prevent fission as best it can. However, with the fuel heating up, you must consider that the water being employed with high levels of boron are doing little to nothing to prevent the fission from occurring. That being said, it's only going to be a short amount of time before the fuel likely surpasses the emergency system and makes its way into the water table. After that happens, soil and water will produce steam clouds that will contaminate vast areas of the planet. The evacuation of the site, game over. I assume this will be more like a nuclear fountain. Think of a geyser of radiation spewing into the atmosphere for the next 10 to 1,000 years, like they are now, except 20 times worse. One that will create temperatures that are unbearable to work near, rising to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or greater. It will contaminate everything its stream touches. Fukushima would become a wasteland of contamination, and Japan would need to extend the evacuation zone so into at least 300 kilometers, likely much more area though. A China syndrome has never happened, thus the mass is beyond me. The contamination would spread in any nation internationally and nationally, as it has now, but in much higher doses, likely 150 to 350 CPM. Note this is on the premise that only one reactor has reached criticality. However, in the event there is an explosion, well, that's just bad. We would witness at least three to 300,000 tons of metric nuclear waste instantly turning into particle form. The release would do either one of three possible things. A really bad case scenario, assist reactors two to six in achieving a full fusion criticality leading to an apocalyptic amount of radiation in such high density that anyone that is in its path would perish by suffocation. Two, the better and yet less likely scenario, achieve a level of detonation while completely staying within a safe proximity of the other troubled reactors on site, which is very unlikely, somehow redirecting most of the initial mass over and into the ocean, thus spreading only minute levels of radiation globally. Then there is the worst case scenario, three. FYI, this is also a product of result number one. If the fusion somehow took the full site, all six reactor, into one big kaboom, meaning a full fusion criticality. In layman terms, there will be absolutely nothing left. Ever witness a coronal mass ejection? Now, have you ever heard of the Earth creating one? If there were an explosion leading to a full fusion criticality, you would need to worry about fights or planning. That would register as an ELE, extinction level event. The explosion would likely blow the entire atmosphere off the planet. Food for thought, GE owns Comcast. Is this why US media is blackballing the story? I think so. The greatest lies ahead. Humanity is in fact in trouble. Well, 
have to scroll down here. I think this article is pretty well done. I mean, here's the depopulation plan, folks. Looks like it's going full scale ahead. It's really, really sad. It's so, so sad. I don't know. I don't even want to read anymore. I'll just scroll down. And from Canada One, thank you for watching. I'll post a link below.